All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so Wedden has a great comment here, Wedden1051919. He says, I think the part where Jesus comes with his armies in Revelation 19 is where they get the idea believers come back with him. That's my guess. Revelation 19.19, 19, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gather together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. All right, so let's go to Revelation 19 and, you know, try to, I, I want to help people to understand. So first of all, I, I agree with what, and I think that is a big part of uh, the confusion for a lot of people. Obviously, it stems from the fact that they don't have faith in the Bible that they hold in their hands so they're gonna naturally believe all sorts of bizarre doctrines because they don't trust the Bible that they hold in their hands so what I want to do is try to clear up any possible confusion regarding Revelation 19 and I want to show you uh, that what we read here in Revelation 19 is the same thing that we're reading in Revelation 20 okay it's it paints a different picture all right I'm gonna show you that and I'm gonna show you that there's only one end of the world all right so let me just get into this real might as well just jump right into it I'll, I'll read I'll just start from the top all right and I'll I'll walk you through this and after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. All right, so, all right, well, let's just go. I was going to say that this is after 17 and 18, that, which talks about the judgment of the great whore, right? Okay. <clears throat> and after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Okay, to, uh, to establish the timeline here, this is after the judgment and wrath of God is poured upon the people. This is after we are lifted up in the air and we are changed, transformed into our glorified body. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the, the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he has judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand and again they said alleluia and her smoke rose up forever and ever and the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped god that sat on the throne saying amen alleluia and a voice came out of the throne saying praise our god all ye his servants and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord our God, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Now, I just want to be clear here that the marriage supper of the Lamb is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, that's the marriage supper of the Lamb, and that's also the consummation of Daniel 9. All right, the consummation is the actual marriage when we are actually transformed into our glorified bodies. All right, just so there's no confusion, I want I, this is going to sound stupid, 
but I got to make this crystal clear. When when I tell you the, about the marriage supper of the Lamb, and then up here, I told you after the judgment, this is the same thing. This is not a different event. It's the same thing. There's only one end of the world. There's only one resurrection of the saints. There's only one return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I fell down, or and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp two ed or I'm, I'm sorry. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Again, this is a description of Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. All right, and this is when we are lifted up in the air. All right, and our enemy is gathered at our feet. And fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. All right, so this is not like three different returns of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is all saying the same thing. All right. It's the same thing. All right, and so all we have to do is connect the dots. It's so obvious. This is not, I mean, it doesn't, wouldn't make any sense, man. I mean, come on. The, I mean, just be honest. And this is what people are doing. They're confusing the very simple scripture of Revelation. And it's not complicated at all. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come, and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Now again, when this happens, this is when we are up in the air with the Lord, our enemy is gathered at our feet, just like what we read in Genesis 3, verse 15, when the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is a fulfillment of many scripture, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Alright, so when this great supper of the great supper of God, or, yeah, unto the supper of the great God, this is when our enemy is killed at our feet the wrath of God has been poured upon them and their dead bodies are everywhere and the fowls of the heaven feast on the dead flesh of kings and mighty men and so on and so forth that he may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men both free and bond both small and great right again I just want you to know this is very simple this is when we are up in the air and our enemy is destroyed at our feet and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gather together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army the, again this is another vision this is not okay after 
the wrath of God is poured upon the earth. This is another vision saying the same exact thing. Alright? That's... It's really simple, but it's very important because without this simple understanding, you're going to have, I think, up to this point, what is it, four or five ends of the world? If you don't understand what you're reading. You know, the whole book of Revelation is about visions given to John by the angel of Jesus Christ to show him and his servants the things which shall shortly come to pass. The whole book is based on visions. This is not a continuation while there's one end of the world and another end of the world. You can you probably count on nearly 50 ends of the world if you don't look at this correctly. If you lack any understanding at all. But it's real simple. It's telling us the same thing over and over again. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gather together and make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. We go to Revelation 20. And we see the same <clears throat> moment in time. I mean, this is all throughout the scripture. The same thing. It's not 50 different times this is going to happen. It's the same thing. All right. The same exact thing. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. This is when we are up in the air. And our enemy is gathered at our feet, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. This is the end of the world when God destroys all evil, all wickedness, all iniquity, forever and, and ever this happens a one-time deal all right so when we when this happened when they gather together to make war against him that sat on the horse this is the same thing that we're reading in Revelation 20 the same thing we're reading all throughout the Bible all right it, it doesn't happen 50 times it happens one time all you have to do is connect the dots and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his beast. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. All right, again, this is not a different supper <laughs> All right, than this right here. Uh, it, it's not multiple, you know, suppers. Not, not mul there's not multiple feasts of uh, the, you know, fowls. The fowls aren't going to feast and then, what, go away and then feast again and then feast again and then feast again and then get to Revelation 20 and then have another feast. All you have to do is connect the dots, man. All right, so when we get to uh, Revelation 20, and it says, The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are. Well, we just read that. The beast and the false prophet were thrown into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. This is not a separate event. This is the same event. This is giving us crystal clear indication that this is the very same thing. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. This is not a new coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the same thing being described over and over and over. Alright, all you have to do is connect the dots. And again, the whole book of Revelation is about visions given to John by the angel of Jesus Christ to show John and his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And I saw, 
and I saw. This is another vision. All right. This is amazing. The, one, number one, this is amazing stuff. And number two, it's crazy. It's incredible. That so many people can't see it, even though it's plainly written right here in the Bible. In the very first book, or the very first uh, verse of Revelation 1. The very first verse. How did you miss that? Man, if you miss this, you're going to miss the whole book. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. He sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. The, the whole book is about this. Man, the... It, Revelation 1 verse 1 does not lie. And I saw. How do you see? To show things. To show unto his servants things. I don't miss that. I mean, if you miss that, buddy, you're going to miss the whole show. You're going to miss the whole thing. And I saw a great white throne. I mean, think about that, just all by itself. That's incredible. To show, and I saw. To show unto his servants, and I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on it. This is another vision, folks. And this is a parallel to what we read in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. It's a parallel. It's not another event, another return of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the same thing. We're being shown the same things over and over. All throughout the Bible. It's incredible. It's amazing once you begin to connect the dots. And how do you connect the dots? You connect the dots by reading the Bible every day. And, of course, it begins with faith. Without faith, it's impossible to have understanding. In Matthew 24, verse 30, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Well, that's Jesus. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. There's going to be no doubt about it. Everybody's going to know. It's the end of the world. Alright. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. The sound of the trumpet signifies the end of the world. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. This is when we are lifted up in the air. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Alright, this is, this is it. This is it. And I saw a great white throne of him that sat upon it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. This is a parallel. The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, whose face the earth and heaven fled away. It's a parallel when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right? And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. All right? This is obviously judgment. And the judgment for us has already been given to us, those of us that are saved. Alright? The judgment was given unto them. So those of us that are born of God, the judgment of God has already been given to us. The judgment of eternal life. Alright, so the judgment is very simple. Are you saved? Are you not saved? If you're saved, you're saved right now. The day 
that you are born of God. You're saved right now. Therefore, the judgment has already been given to you right now. And God can't change that judgment. God will not change that judgment. And God will not impute sin upon you because you are born of the Spirit of God. You abide in God and God abides in you. You abide in Jesus. Jesus abides in you. And therefore you can never die. Alright. And I saw thrones. That right now we are kings and priests unto God. Jesus, and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness. He has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Alright. Right now we sit on thrones. We're a royal priesthood. And judgment has been given to us. Alright, and now real quickly, uh, I hope I made that clear. Yeah, and I mean, it's as clear as all can be that the, we're given, we're being, we're just being shown the same thing over and over, multiple times from every different angle to make it known and to make it clear and to make it simple. Alright, well, the problem obviously is if you don't have faith in what you're reading and you're going to imagine. 25 different times that in the world's going to end. All right, you have to really severely deny logic to believe that stuff, but it's incredible because 90 plus percent of pastors today are teaching so many different ridiculous things regarding the end times. And that's why I think I have to be vigilant because I <laughs> is anybody standing up for the truth of the end times prophecy, the eschatology? Everybody's got it wrong. But you know, again, I think that's what it, it, the way it's supposed to be. The closer we get to the end, the more deception there's going to be, and it's incredible all the deception that we're seeing today. Okay, so. Um, one thing I want to address before I end this, I probably went too long, but I don't care. I really don't. So, uh, one thing that uh, a close friend of mine asked about was uh, something to do with uh, the souls of them that were beheaded. All right, the souls of them that were beheaded. And I got to think about this. I think there's a a verse in Revelation 6 if I'm remembering correctly and the word is slain let me see if I can find All right, okay and when he had opened the fifth seal and I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held I saw the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and then of course in Revelation 20, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the Word of God. Now, it's it's really important to understand that we are one in Christ. All right, God is not a respecter of persons. There is nobody that is extra special. All right. I got, I got to make that clear. It sounds dumb when I say it, but the implication is if you believe that only the people that are beheaded get resurrected, you're making the rest of the Bible out to be a lie, for one thing. <laughs> you are, because there's only one resurrection, and I've showed that many times in 1 Corinthians 15. Every man in his own order, first Christ, and then those of us which are Christ. That is coming. All right. So there's only one resurrection. Yeah, I better. I have to show this. But I got to make it clear, don't I? I don't want anybody to be confused about this. I really don't. If I'm going to take this much time, I might as well show the verse. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alright. Oh, maybe I should have started there. Oh, maybe I should start there. <laughs> Alright. And if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all 
of men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. So in Revelation 20, we read about the first resurrection. Jesus is the first resurrection. And blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. We are partakers of his resurrection. But now Christ has risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. You've got to be out of your cotton pick in mind to suggest Jesus is not the first resurrection. You got to have an absolute abject misunderstanding of the scripture to suggest Jesus is not the first fruits or the first resurrection and then to suggest that you oh I'm not living and reigning with Christ right now while well, you're just saying that hey I'm not saved Right now, if Jesus Christ is not reigning in your life right now, how can you rightly say that you're saved? It's insanity. All right. So, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. And the last enemy that is destroyed is death. Okay, so when we read here in Revelation 6, and I saw the altar, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. And then in Revelation 8, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. The, there, make no mistake about it. These are the saved people. All right? And then the saved people, all of us, just like what we read in 1 Thessalonians 4, also, same thing. 1 Thessalonians 4, all right? And for starting in verse 15, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God <clears throat> excuse me and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord all right so this is the same thing Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming. So when he comes, first the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in here. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. There's only one resurrection of the dead. All right, Jesus being the first fruits, he is the first resurrection. He leads the way. He is our example. We follow him. He has died, resurrected, ascended to heaven, and promised to return for us so when he does return we will be res we will uh, um, ascend to heaven and meet him in the clouds okay when that happens this is when w in a moment as soon as he comes in the clouds of heaven is when we are changed we are essentially resurrected first the dead in Christ then those of us which are alive and remain, we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. We will be changed and we will ascend to heaven, just like Jesus. All right, you think of like some, like a one of your loved ones that has died, but they're saved. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, they will come up out of their graves and be resurrected, just like Jesus was. And then they will ascend to heaven, just like Jesus did. Okay, that's why I say he is the leader. He is our example. We follow him. 
just as he has done it. He has done it for, for us first to show us the way. Right? And so we're going to follow his lead. Jesus died, defeated death, rose from the grave, and ascended to heaven. So our loved ones that have died, they also will resurrect from the grave and ascend to heaven. Just like Jesus did. All right? Now we that are still alive, if Jesus comes today, we won't um, taste death, but we'll be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, we'll be changed. And then we'll ascend to heaven. And, um, you know, I guess I feel like I have to be thorough about this. If anybody's paying attention, then... Um, I want them to learn, right? What is that verse that Jesus talks about? Oh, that's, that's it's in, I know where it's at. Uh, no, uh, we'll just use this, because this is mentioned a few times. All right, and throughout the scripture. All right, right here we got three mentions. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death, which shall not taste of death which shall not taste of death all right and so in um, oops first Corinthians 15 when it says in a moment this is a mystery for we shall not sleep for we shall not all sleep but we shall be that we shall all be changed we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed all right just like I described Right, if you got a loved one, they're saved, they will come out of the grave, be resurrected, and ascend up to heaven just like Jesus did. All right, those of us which are alive, for example, if Jesus comes today, we won't taste death. I tell you the truth, I tell you of a truth. There shall be some standing here which shall not taste of death. All right. And so, uh, this is all very consistent all throughout the Bible. All right, so again, I guess the point I was making here is that the souls of them that were beheaded, and again in Revelation 6, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the Word of God. So we are all one in Christ Jesus. There is only one resurrection. All right, and that, that happens for all of us the dead and the living all of us that are saved we will all be resurrected at the same time and uh, again I just want to reiterate the fact of the matter is that we are all one in Christ Jesus all right if I could find a verse to support that that would be fantastic okay so here's a good one Galatians 3 verse 28 there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free there is neither male nor female for ye are all one in Christ Jesus and so I I could do this all day man it so there's no extra reward if somebody's rich and fancy looking and fancy cars they're not gonna get fancy stuff in heaven whereas some poor sucker like me I'm gonna get a bridge to live under in heaven that's not that's not how it works we are all one in Christ Jesus and <clears throat> there's no extra rewards in these people that preach extra rewards in heaven after the resurrection they're all nuts they're all nuts and so what's the verse I'm looking for here all right then Rev, um, Matthew 20 excuse me so in Matthew 20 um, I did you know I did you know I don't know I don't know what it says uh, for dog's sake where are we at here I do thee no wrong that's it all right so saying these last have wrought but one hour so you got this is a parable make that clear in this parable 
Uh, you got guys that work 12 hours. And the agreement is that at the end of 12 hours, they get a penny for the work that they've done. But as the day progressed, at the last hour, people came and worked for one hour. Now the people that work 12 hours, they come complaining saying, these have wrought but one hour. Thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne, which those of us that have borne the burden and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto his. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. All right. So you, I, yeah, I could get into all that. The point being is that you know, in regards to Revelation six, the I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain, and again in Revelation twenty, the souls of them that were beheaded. All right. All these people, every one of us that are saved, we all get paid the penny. That's it. Whether we've been saved or, you know, since we were little kids, you know, saved, you know, 80 years, or whether we're saved one second before the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Doesn't matter. We all get paid the same. All right. And, I mean, come on. Everlasting life is not enough for you? All right. So that would be ridiculous if you understood it that way, right? So also are these complainers ridiculous when they're complaining, well, hey, we worked more. We should get paid more. That's like rich people saying, oh, I did more work. I should get more in heaven. You know, and that essentially implying that I, since... I don't have the money that they have. I should just live under a bridge for all eternity. That's not, and that's not uh, everlasting life. You know, that's not, that's not going to happen. So I don't worry about that at all. We're all getting paid the same, and so that's important to understand. Again, that we are all one in Christ Jesus, and therefore, these souls that are mentioned in Revelation six and Revelation twenty. They are one with us, just as we are one with Jesus. All right, and we will all be resurrected at the same time. There's only one resurrection. All right, and that is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And this is supported all throughout the Bible, and specifically as I have shown you already in First Corinthians 15, every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming all right that's it it's real simple okay anyways I appreciate the comment Wed, and I apologize uh, I wanted to keep this to about five minutes and I think I went a little bit long